Hello everyone, Fluffy Game Dev here. In my video teaching how to make an inventory system, I mentioned that using this system it should easily be possible to implement some equipment slots. That is, some inventory slots that do something specific when there's an item in that slot. The most common form of equipment slots is used to represent a piece of armor or weapons the player can equip. If an item is in the slot, it can change the player's appearance, his or her stats, maybe even provide some extra skills. If you haven't seen my inventory system video, pause this one and come back here once you have seen it. It'll give you some context as to what I'll be doing here. For a bit more context, here's a quick overview of how the project is organized. First of all, each type of asset has its own folder. Scenes go in scenes, scriptable objects go in scriptable objects, etc. In the scripts folder, the files are then separated by scope. So inventory related code goes in inventory, user interface code goes in UI, and code used by all of the folders is put in common. Finally, in the inventory folder, the files are separated between two other folders. Core contains the core system code. In other words, some code that could theoretically be used in a game engine other than Unity. And Controllers, on the other hand, contains some Unity-specific code like the components. That, for now, is pretty much all you need to know. As usual, all the code I produce is available on my GitHub. Feel free to use it as much as you want, I left a link in the description. First and foremost, let's create some extra slots. We'll have some for weapons, helmets, chest armor, pants, and boots. The interesting thing with those slots is that they can only accept specific kinds of items. For example, we can't equip a helmet in the chest slot. It wouldn't make any sense. So that's something we'll have to take into account. But before we do, we need to store the new inventory slots somewhere. There are several places we could store our new slots. We could store them in the same inventory as the other items. Then we could rely on some filtering methods to find the slots. Or we could store them in a separate inventory containing only equipped item slots. I'll go for the second solution since it won't require me to change much of the UI code. To implement it, I created a new component called Equipped Items Holder. This component will go on the same game object as the inventory holder. In other words, the player game object. This component will simply contain an inventory and each slot in the inventory will be created to accept a specific type of item. More details on that in the next part. To display those slots, let's create a new component called Equipped Items UI Controller. This component will go on a UI panel containing a bunch of inventory slot UI controllers, one for each type of item. The component will also listen to the same event as the inventory UI controller to know when to display the panel and when displayed, it will link each slot to the appropriate UI controller. Now that we have our new slots, we must ensure that those slots can only contain specific types of items. There are many ways to approach this problem. The one I have chosen is to create a new scriptable object called Inventory Item Type. Inventory items would have a reference to an item type. For example, a sword would have weapon as a type, and a helmet would have the headgear type. Inventory slots would have a list of allowed inventory item types. That way, when moving an item to a slot, we can check if the item is allowed in the slot. If the list is empty, then any item can go in the slot. Now, remember the equipped items holder? Well, to create the slots, we have a list of item types. And for each item type, we create a slot accepting only the item type. Now that the code is done, let's create a bunch of scriptable objects for each item type. Weapons, helmets, chest armor, pants and boots. With all of that, we can already see that it is no longer possible to equip a helmet in the pants slot. However, the player currently has no way to know in which slot an item can be moved to. There are three ways I can think of to remedy that issue. The first would be to add to the slots an image representing what can be stored in the slots. The second solution could be to darken the slots that can't contain a held item. And the third solution would be to highlight the slots that can contain the item. Note that those solutions aren't mutually exclusive. So depending on the art style of your game, you may favor different solutions. In this case, I'll go for the solutions 1 and 3. For solution number 1, no biggie. All we need to do is create some sprites for the empty slots, 
and when a given slot is empty, we display its sprite. For solution number 3, let's modify the inventory slot UI controller script to handle a highlighted state. In that state, we'll change the color of the slot to something brighter. And in equipped items UI controller, we'll listen to the cursor item slot to know when an item is picked up or dropped. And when that happens, we highlight the slots that are of the same type as the item held by the cursor. The last thing we must do for this tutorial is to alter the player's statistics when equipping some gear. All the stats will be handled by a stat holder component that will go on the player game object. I won't explain here how it works, but this can be the subject of a later video. All you need to know is that that component holds a list of stats and that we can add some modifiers to those stats. To modify the stats, there are many ways to implement a solution. In my example, I went for a solution that avoids coupling the inventory holder to the stat holder. In other words, both components can work regardless of whether or not the other is present on the game object. Anyway, to do so I rely on a third component, the inventory stat applier. At start, this component accesses all the equipment slots and registers callbacks to know when the items in each slot change. When a slot does indeed change, we remove the stat modifiers that need to be removed and add some new ones instead. To know which stat modifiers to use, I would have to add that information in some way in the inventory item scriptable object. But since I don't want a dependency between the inventory and the stats, I rely on what I call data components. This will be the subject for a video in the future, but all you need to know here is that I created a new type of scriptable object that can have components. Pretty much like game objects do. In this case I have a stat modifier data component that can be accessed from any inventory item. And to update the stats, I check out if the equipped items have a stat modifier data component and then apply their stat modifiers. To check that this works, I made a little UI object to display the values of various stats such as attack and defense. I also added some stat modifiers to various inventory items. And as you can see, whenever we equip a new item, the displayed stats are updated accordingly. A sword will increase the attack stats, whereas some boots will increase the defense. And there we have it. You now know how to expand this inventory system to handle equipping items and how to modify the player's stats accordingly. To go further, you can try changing the player's skin according to equipped items. I hope you enjoyed watching this tutorial, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing for some similar content. And if you have some questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section, I will be glad to answer. In any event, have fun coding and see you next time!